since its first appearance strapped to the loose end of an arm in 1868, we've all become pretty well accustomed to what has been very unimaginatively titled the wristwatch. Even in today's age of super-fast mega-technology, we still choose to strap our time-telling devices to the part of us most convenient to bring close to our faces. The hands-free device is so familiar that it's practically branded in our minds. And here's why the Longines Navigation Watch Type A7 USA is one of the weirder ones. Looking to buy, sell or exchange a premium watch? Visit WatchFinder, the pre-owned watch specialist. A big thank you to every single person who watches and enjoys these videos. It really means a huge amount to us and to me personally. Your subscription would be hugely appreciated. It helps more than you can know. Thank you. It's as plain as the watch on your wrist that this Longines is at a slant. You don't need to adjust your monitor. It's supposed to look like that. In fact, you don't even need to adjust your head because that's kind of the whole point of this watch. It's a pilot's watch, one that draws its inspiration from an almost identical Longines from the 1930s, also called the Type A7. A for aviation, no doubt. Seven because, well, I guess there were six earlier attempts. But why was Longines even making pilot's watches? It's less well known than it should be, but Longines is an old, old brand. One of the oldest. Never mind the 1930s, Longines has been keeping people on time since the 1830s, so by the time aviation came along, the eyes there may have been old, but they were keen with experience. Longines knew that travelling by aviation, or aveling, was going to be a pretty big hit, and so it was decided that a Longines watch should be the one to help pilots navigate during aviation, or Navigation. No point leaving it to chance. The watchmaker leveraged what you might now call celebrity endorsement and paid a flying man to wear a Longines watch as he flew. You might have heard of him. His name was Charles Lindbergh, and he flew a pretty little kite called the Spirit of St. Louis as he navigated his way across the Atlantic for the first time ever, all the while wearing a Longines on his wrist as he aveled. So why the wonky dial? Well, you don't survive a century in the watchmaking game without trying out a few ideas, and Longines had the particularly bright one of cantering the display around 40 degrees, so the pilot wouldn't have to abandon his controls simply to see if he was to be late for tea and biscuits. As an idea, it's simply marvellous. If you're the kind of person who knows their Daytonas from their Datejusts, then you'll also be pretty confident in stating that this watch, this pilot's watch, is also a chronograph. We know from Breitling that a chronograph on a pilot's watch is a good idea, a useful aid to the calculation of many things that occur whilst traversing the sky. There was no autopilot, no digital readouts, no fly-by-wire, the pilot was as much a mathematician and engineer as they were the custodian of the flight controls. Don't be fooled by the wonky dial or the vertically stacked arrangement of the subdials. Make no mistake, this is for sure a chronograph. In fact, a little bit of mental acrobatics will reveal how this thing was quite simply devised. By rotating the movement anti-clockwise a little bit, to move the crown somewhere between where the 1 and 2 would usually reside. Were the dial printed as you'd expect, the 12 would be where the 9 is now. But there's still an unanswered question, and that's, if this is a chronograph, where are the chronograph pushers? There's usually one for start and stop, and one for reset. Short answer, on the end of the crown. But if that's start and stop, where's reset? Shorter answer, it's also reset. Kind of like a stopwatch. And when you look at the shape of the case, that's because it, 
Well, the original was based on a stopwatch. It wasn't until 1934, a couple of years after the A7, until a certain Mr. Willie Breitling thought a watch might benefit from separating the functions out over two pushers, finally giving us the arrangement we all know and love today. The next and final quirk of this watch takes a little bit of thinking, and is more notable for its absence than it is for its presence. Until as late as 1945, it was a feature only found in conjunction with many other much more complicated functionality, but now its inclusion is virtually a given on any watch to be found in a jeweler's window. I am, of course, talking about the date. It's a hot button topic, a seemingly never ending discussion surrounding the pros and cons of the little window so often seen cut out of an otherwise flush dial. The benefit is obvious. A watch serves primarily to relay information, and the more information it can clearly impart, the better. Rolex's 1945 Datejust was the first to do so exclusively with the monthly vivisection. So proud is the organization of this feature that it quite literally puts it under the microscope. But prior to 1945, when many of the classic designs that defined the shape of the wristwatch as we know it today came to be, the date was unheard of, and that includes the A7. Previous versions of the modern A7 reissue have indeed included a date window at 6. This watch is 6, I mean. And that, and many other reissues like it, have come under fire for making that decision. It's a lose-lose situation for the manufacturer. Keep the date and incur the wrath of the enthusiast community. Lose the date and deter a public that's become quite used to having one, thank you very much. For this USA edition of the A7, Longines has chosen the latter, alongside a design that is the closest representation of the original yet. It's an unusual decision at the expense of practicality, but one I think many would agree suits the watch to a T. The idiosyncrasies of the Longines Avigation Type A7 offer a view to the inquisitive into a past before such things as chronographs, dates, and even the wristwatch itself was part of common parlance. The many ages of discovery that have evolved this watch into being each tell a story of invention that leaves a person with a certain curious nostalgia. What would it have been like to adapt to business to the coming of flight, or experience the revolution of the twin pusher chronograph for the first time? And perhaps more importantly, what is there that we are amazed by today that in years to come will be looked back upon with that same quaint yearning? Discover more exceptional watches at WatchFinder. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. If there are any watches you'd like to see featured, please let us know in the comments below.